GameRanks presents 10 of the biggest holy shit gaming moments from 2016. There were a lot of games from 2016 with some awesome moments and some big surprises and we're gonna talk about them, but you have to be warned, this video is going to be completely, completely full of spoilers. So if you hear the name of a game that popped up that you haven't played yet, maybe skip it. But anyway, let's get started off with number 10 talking about Battlefield 1. Battlefield 1 is a really good, solid Battlefield multiplayer game, but what really surprised people is the single player campaign, most notably the first level. While the game is full of surprises, that first level is completely sobering and shocking in the way it depicts war and someone's place in it. I'm really just giving you the sense that you are just a pawn, you are just another expendable person who can make a difference in the war, but ultimately you're pretty much doomed. The way you jump into the eyes of a soldier and you fight to your inevitable death and then the name of that deceased soldier then pops up on the screen really, really really cuts you deep and is incredibly effective. This was definitely a moment that made you stop and go, wow, holy shit. Not in like a holy shit type of way, but a wow, shit, man, war sucks type of way. And at number nine, I think one of the biggest holy shit gaming moments this year is actually Pokemon Go. Now, listen, I know you probably don't want to talk about mobile games, but we have to acknowledge the absolute insane phenomenon that Pokemon Go was for a very brief time. City streets and parks crowded with people all on their phones playing this damn Pokemon game. The fact that businesses were opening up Poke Centers and allowing people to come play Pokemon games there, and the fact that police were getting mad at people playing the game in the streets, this thing was absolutely huge and had a crazy impact, and that is worth saying holy shit over. I know the first time I saw a large group of people playing it, not even in a densely populated area, I was pretty shocked. It got everybody out of their houses, whether you're in a city or a town, and that's weird and crazy and pretty cool. And at number eight, we have Gears of War 4 and the realization that one of the main characters, Kate Diaz, is actually related to the Locust Queen. While in this newest part of the Gears universe, the Locust Queen has came and went, it's really the actual reveal and the setup of this actual relation that really makes it important. First of all, you're searching for Kate Diaz's mother who is being held and it turns out it's because there's some Locust relation here. I think it worked out good for Kate Diaz because I wasn't really sure what they were doing for her character. But once this is revealed, it all kind of makes sense and what her place really is in the story. But ultimately, Kate has to kill her mother, but her mother gives her a family heirloom medallion that was her grandmother's, and she looks at the coin and the rest of the group sees it, and it's this nice, pretty coin. But then when everybody leaves, she turns it over, and you realize that the real side of the coin is the locust symbol. And when she turned that coin over, that makes you go, whoa, holy shit. It was a really, really effective twist and moment, and it did a really good job of leaving our mouths wide open. And at number seven, we have something from Final Fantasy XV, a game that ultimately most of us here at Game Ranks really love, but we have to talk about something that made us say holy shit and not for a good reason, and that is Chapter 13. God, you probably heard about this one by now. Chapter 13 has a reputation for a reason. It's awful. And honestly, we were saying holy shit because we were saying, what the fuck happened here? How could you take a game that was going so great and moving along at a great pace and then ultimately grind it to a terrible, awful halt? This is without a doubt the worst part of the game. I know I sound like I'm complaining, but you can tell that something went wrong here in development. This is where they cut the corners or this is where they half-assed something. The game strips away most of your abilities and reduces you to slowly walking down hallways and awkwardly hiding or fighting from monsters and it doesn't quite work because the hiding mechanics don't work well. And also, you barely have any of your normal weapons and can't fight traditionally. But not only that, the endless hallways just keep going and keep going and the section just drags out for far too long. Because it's a shame to see such an awesome game go downhill so quickly. That revelation made us say holy shit, honestly. And at number six on our list, we have some reveals from Telltale's take on Batman season one. Now, Batman has a lot of moments that might make you go holy shit because they just take the characters and really flip them on their heads in different ways. They really interpret these characters and set them up in completely different scenarios and situations and even portrayals. And in turn, that really does a good job of exploring and encapsulating what these characters really mean to Batman. But I think the biggest moment is what they did to Batman and Bruce Wayne himself. They took one of the core staples, one of the things that always has remained pure in a Batman comic or story, and that is the Waynes. His parents, Thomas and Martha Wayne, who have always been pure in every portrayal, suddenly turned out to be corrupt city criminals with ties to the Falcones and Mafia and other nasty dealings. And they reveal that right off at the end of chapter one, and that's amazing. And if you play that first chapter, if that didn't get you hooked on the rest of the game, I don't know what else will, because that was definitely a moment worthy of the phrase, holy shit. Because it's unlike anything you've really experienced in a Batman thing before. And we gotta give them props for that. 
And at number five, we have a moment from inside, and it's basically the final sequence. Now, a lot of people feel very differently about the ending of the game, but I think whether you liked it or whether you hated it, it still made you go holy shit regardless because it is such an insane heel turn from what the rest of the game has been. You wander around through this creepy world as a sad little boy, narrowly escaping danger in a dull and mysterious and weird dark world. And then suddenly you're in a laboratory, you're in a tank, you get absorbed by this massive gross, grotesque human things, and then you become this disgusting, awful, terrible blob wreaking havoc, running through a laboratory, smashing through buildings, there's no music, there's just the screams of your victims and escaping scientists. And like I said, whether you like it or not, it's just so shocking and honestly fucked up that it undoubtedly made you go, holy shit. I expected the game to have a twist by the end, but I, I did not expect it to be some sort of weird, grotesque, Cronenberg-esque thing that left me ultimately really grossed out and weirded out. But whether or not you thought that whole sequence is effective, I'll leave it up to you, but I just think that was crazy. And at number four on our list, we had to include one because, let's be honest, a lot of bosses in Dark Souls 3 make you go holy shit as soon as you square up against them, and we decided to put the Nameless King on this list. Mostly, I guess, because he's important to the story, and you hear about him a lot, and then the ultimate reveal of him, and then the fight with him is very holy shit worthy because he's crazy badass looking, there's multiple tiers to this fight, and it's really, really intense. Is it the hardest Dark Souls boss fight ever? I don't know, that's up to you. But it was probably one of the bigger holy shit moments in the game, at least for the team here. Here, and it is definitely worth experiencing. If for some reason you put Dark Souls aside because you couldn't progress any longer, get back in there and try again because the Nameless King boss battle is pretty awesome. And at number three, let's talk about Titanfall 2. We think this is a great game. Some people disagree with us, but hey, we stick to our guns. And one of the biggest surprises with Titanfall 2 was the surprisingly pretty damn good campaign. The campaign has a lot of moments that make you go holy shit, most notably when you get thrown through the air in an airship battle by your robot and landing on top of an airship and fighting your way across. But we sat around and debated it for a while and the biggest holy shit moment for us in Titanfall 2 was the time travel mechanic. Where the hell did that come from? It comes out of nowhere and it's actually really fun. It's a really good mechanic. And and it makes for some really interesting gameplay scenarios that we did not expect at all and left us going, holy shit. Especially when you first get the time travel device, there's this whole big sequence and this crazy thing happens. And then it just says, press L1 to time travel. And you're like, uh, okay. And then all of a sudden you're introduced to this pretty cool gameplay mechanic that's a lot of fun that you didn't expect at all. Not only that, but the brilliance of it, the game doesn't let it out say it's welcome. Once you really get through the whole time travel mechanic thing, the game ditches the device in favor of moving on to something else. It was a lot of fun to mess around with though, and it was crazy awesome. It was a huge surprise for us because we knew Titanfall 2 was going to be good, but we did not expect it to have one of the better time travel mechanics in a game in a while. And at number two, I think we're going to pick from our choice of game of the year, and that's Doom. And really, the intro of the game is one of the most incredible things and definitely, definitely should make you go holy shit. If it didn't make you go holy shit, I don't think you have any excitement or, or testosterone or any blood flowing through your body because the whole intro where you wake up, there's demons, you start punching them in the face, and then you work your way through, you pick up a gun, then you eventually you get a shotgun, and then the music plays and it's awesome well-constructed metal and it's badass and you cock the shotgun and it goes in time with the music and it's incredible and it's just such a good moment the first probably 10 minutes of doom are one of our biggest holy shit moments not even just this year but for the foreseeable future it's really badass and metal for lack of a better word and at number one we're going to pick something from uncharted 4 a game that definitely had a lot of holy shit moments in terms of story reveals and action set pieces but the biggest holy shit moment was the crash bandicoot sequence this quiet scene when you're hanging out with Elena in your living room and then all of a sudden they turn on the TV and fire up the original PlayStation and have a friendly competitive game of Crash Bandicoot is like what the fuck and then the game actually lets you play it and it's just insane because it's like you're playing one of Naughty Dog's first and you're playing one of Naughty Dog's newest and so while you're having fun and you're actually seeing kind of like the history books of Naughty Dog where they were and where they are now but you also just get a glance of video games where they were then and where they are now and that is an incredible holy shit moment. While Uncharted 4 definitely isn't perfect that made me light up like the 4th of July. I could not stop smiling during that sequence, and I definitely said holy shit out loud more than once. But guys, those are our biggest holy shit moments in games from 2016. Now we gotta hear yours down in the comments because there were a ton more games that released this year and there was a bunch with plenty of surprises and reveals and holy shit worthy moments that we gotta talk about. So if you got a top five or a top 10, let's hear about it down in the comments below. I'll be there talking with you guys. I'll also be on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Jake Baldino. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out and clicking the like button because it helps us out. And also you can click that circle and subscribe if you haven't already. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.